Hi, it's Lori Neverman from Common Sense Home, and today I'm digging out Grandma Catherine's recipe binder, and we're going to make a cinnamon cake recipe. And this binder was handed down to me after Grandma passed away, and it's really fascinating to me, at least, you know, it's a piece of family, it's a piece of history. She's got a lot of handwritten recipes, and then she's got recipes she clipped out of magazines, and then she also has some different notes from the farm. And I thought we'd take a little peek in this first before we get baking. So I'm gonna whip the camera around and I'm gonna take a peek. Okay, you can see this was an old style photo album and Grandma just had pieces of construction paper and it's a pretty rough shape, but still legible at this point. I should probably check in with a preservationist and see if we could do something to keep it. Another neat thing in with the recipes was an old newspaper clipping of my sister from many, many years ago when she run, won a contest with uh, a batch of carrot salad. And there's her, there's Lois and there's her bowl of salad. So if you, if you want, I can put that recipe on the site too. Just give me a holler. And Here's the coffee cake recipe that I want to try. There's one on the next page too, and you can see, like I said, there's mixed in handwritten recipes with clip recipes. This one has full instructions. There's another coffee cake on the next page, but that one's missing part of the instructions. Like grandma must have known what she was doing so she didn't write it all down. And another interesting thing that at the good pineapple refrigerator cake. <laughs> and but there are some notes from their farm back from the 1950s and on this page it's got breeding schedules and on this page it's got recipes for um, louse powder for cattle rhodonone pyrethrum meth methoxychlorlindane and the louse powder for young stock not in dairy barn, DDT, toxaphene, BHC, or chlordane. So this is, you can tell it's, it's a bit dated. This was back from before DDT was banned on the farms. And they had, and I read about this previously that they told farmers they found out that DDT was accumulating in the milk. So they kept telling them to use it on the livestock but not on the cattle that were actively melting, milking. So it's a little snippet of history here. Anyway, I'll flip back to our recipe and then scoot that aside and then we'll get baking. We start with a quarter cup of melted butter. Get that in here. And you don't want it soupy, you just want it softened, ideally. and three quarter cup of sugar. Cream those together. And you can do this in an electric mixing bowl if you prefer. I just tend to like hand mixing things. At least if it's nothing too complicated and doesn't require hours of mixing. Less noise in the kitchen. Comes together reasonably quick. And we've got that, and then we got one egg. And get that mixed in there. And then to this, I'm going to add my dry ingredients, which is two cups of sifted flour, three teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And those are already mixed together in a bowl, and I'm going to alternate that with three quarter cup of milk. And you can get the full recipe in printable form on the website. I'll have a post link underneath this. So we get in some milk. Or <laughs> get in some milk. This is the flour. I do have the milk right next door. So need to alternate this and try not to mix at such a pace that all the flour flies immediately out all over the countertop. I 
I also have my oven preheated to 375 and I have an 8 by 8 glass pan that has been greased sitting at the ready for as soon as I get this mixed. Okay, I'm going to get that in and then get the rest of our flour in. And get that mixed. And you want to keep working around and kind of folding the wet into the dry and just gently mixing it. If you're using a stand mixer, keep it on low. You know, we need to hit the turbo boost. And get the rest of my flour in here. Or moi. <laughs> Tired. Getting near the end of the day here. Get the rest of my milk in here. And as soon as that is just mixed, we'll be ready to put that in the pan. And for this recipe, I've also prepared the cinnamon crumble layer or layers because part of it goes midway through the cake and then the rest of it goes on top. So I'm going to take my dough, spread half of it in the pan, put some of, the, some of the cinnamon crumble in and then spread the rest of the dough and put the cinnamon crumble on top. And in our cinnamon crumble we have half a cup or a quarter cup of sugar, three teaspoons of cinnamon, two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of melted butter. So let's see how evenly I can get half of this in the pan. Woohoo! I think that's about right. You know, coffee cakes are one of those things that a lot of people just don't make anymore. But back in the 50s and 60s, Everybody did coffee cake. So it's one of those recipes that just reminds me of grandma, which is no bad thing because I do miss her very much. She's been gone quite a while now, over 20 years, but she practically raised me. So here we go. I'm going to get half of that cinnamon streusel spread through the middle of the cake. And try to spread that around as evenly as possible. Somebody's going to get a naked piece in here. I need more practice at this. All right. Now we're going to spread the rest of our batter as evenly as possible over the top of the cake. This is going to go into that 375 degree oven for about 30 minutes. But first, I got to get it spread out, hopefully, without rearranging my streusel too much. And if you press it out to the edges, you can kind of get that to seal a little bit and hold in place, which will help keep that from spreading all over. Of course, it doesn't matter if a little bit mixes in here and there. You just want to make sure that you have some streusel lower in the cake and some streusel in the topping. you do this sort of thing, the easier it'll get. 
All right. And call that good. Get the top on. And then we will be ready to get this in the oven. Almost there. Boom. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Even. Pretty even. I think we are ready to go. And here's our finished cake. It's had a chance to cool and I cut it up and I'm going to fish out a piece here. And you can see that that is, there is some cinnamon mix down into the cake. And that's a little bit more pronounced on the interior pieces. And set that over there. I get two pieces of cake. There you go. And that is Grandma's Cinnamon Cake Recipe from her old recipe book, which is kind of cool. I was looking at some of the cross dates, and this is probably 70 years old. And because here's another recipe from February 1950. Although this says, bake this in 1968. So <laughs> it's hard to say, but it was one of the earlier recipes in the book. Um, if you'd like to see some more old fashioned recipes, let me know. She's got some different things in here for, let's see, devil's food cake, applesauce cake, I know a lot of you really like the old fashioned rhubarb pudding cake. So if you enjoy that sort of thing, just leave a comment below and tell me about it. And that is about it. I'd love it if you'd stick around and subscribe and share your thoughts on what you'd like to see in more content, whether it's gardening, recipes, or just things we do around the homestead. Thank you so much.